Ideas for the present, dreams for the future. Your imagination holds the key. Walt Disney once said the era we live in is a dream come true. But there are still plenty of avenues to explore. The Disney Channel invites you to join us now and imagine. The next stop in our journey into the world of illusion is literally a magical location. It's the Magic Castle in Hollywood, California. And behind its doors is an environment devoted to the art and science of magic. If you're looking for an enchanted evening, or in this case, afternoon, the castle's gloomy entrance seems like a perfect place to start. It's the kind of place you'd expect to meet a mysterious stranger even if it turns out to be your own shadow. But most of the people you meet here are mysterious by profession, including professional magician Bob Dorian. Dave, one of the underlying principles of all magic is the eye perceiving what the mind wants it to. Perhaps this little card trick would be a good illustration. If I were to show you the ace of clubs, diamonds, and spades, and then ask you very simply, just to keep your eye on the ace of diamonds as I mix them and lay them out on the table like so. Dave, where would you think the Ace of Diamonds would be? Well, if I were to guess, I'd guess right there. Right here? Well, you'd be wrong. Why don't you try again? <laughs> okay. Let's, I'll try there. Try here? Yeah. No. In fact, in fact, the Ace of Diamonds is not there at all, because when you weren't looking, I put it up here in my pocket. Wow. I don't suppose you could tell us how that's done. Well, oh, this is a very simple effect, actually, where the Ace of Diamonds is never over here to begin with. The Ace of Diamonds is placed up here in your pocket, like so. You have the other three aces with the ace of hearts concealed I to see. look like the ace of diamonds. You show them very simply, calling attention to the ace of spades, diamonds, and clubs. Square them up, and from there on, the effect works itself. And I guess since we're used to seeing that symbol in relation to cards, the diamond, it... That's true, because your, your mind just normally accepts it without questioning it. Well, show us and th another. this is one of the basic principles of magic. Here's another one, Dave, that uses a few very ordinary objects. A, a half dollar, a piece of cardboard, and a drinking glass. Now, the idea of this one, Dave, is to keep your eye on the coin. I'll place it right there in the center of the cardboard, and then, using a napkin, cover the glass like so, so you can't see what's going on to preserve the secret of the illusion. Uh -huh. If I were to cover the coin with the glass, snap my fingers, just wave your hand over the glass. Very good, Dave, because by doing that, you will cause the coin to actually vanish from underneath the glass. Not only has it vanished from underneath the glass, it has additionally penetrated the cardboard and is now underneath. That's a good one. Is that the kind of trick that our viewers at home could do? Sure, could because it's a very simple, uh, very simple thing to put together yourself. Again, illustrating the idea that the eye sees what the mind wants it to. You need a drinking glass, you need a piece of cardboard, and then you need a circular matching piece, okay. which fits into the glass like so. And of course, two coins, one of which is underneath the cardboard from the very beginning. So you could whip this together in 10 minutes. Exactly. And it's a simple matter of just covering the coin with the glass because your mind has a preconceived notion of what a glass looks like inverted on a piece of cardboard. That's great. How else can we make that uh, coin vanish? Well, there are a couple ways. One is uh, an old, a very old trick which is known as the French drop, which again uses the principles of misdirection. For example, if I were to take that half dollar and just cause it to, as it were, evaporate into nothingness, the truth of the matter is that it was down here all the time. It's Perhaps I can illustrate it like this just by covering like so. Uh-huh. And your and eyes like, follow that hand? Your behind. eyes follow this hand because my body language and my eyes tell you to. That's one way of doing it. Then there's also another, but we don't talk about that one. <laughs> As we explore the Magic Castle further, we meet Bill Larson, founding president of the Academy of Magical Arts. Bill knows the castle's secrets like an open book, or in this case, a bookcase that opens on command. Open sesame. Magic. Terrific. After you. This place is full of surprises. There's no telling what you'll discover next. But then Bill says it's the unexpected that makes magic so popular. Well, I think everybody wants to believe in the unbelievable, to, to think that uh, the impossible is possible. That fellow staring over Bill's shoulder is no stranger to the business of magic. Harry Houdini was perhaps the most famous illusionist of all. 
His turn of the century escapes from chains and padlocks, cartons nailed shut, and deep icy waters earned Houdini a permanent place in the annals of magic and show business, two fields that have a great deal in common. Because he was a locksmith, he knew all about handcuffs, all about locks. People today, escape artists, can't do what Houdini did. The man had the ability, for example, to, to make his hand almost as small as his wrist, right down almost as small as his wrist. So you can imagine, if he had any leeway at all, he could just pull right out of handcuffs without even having to pick the lock. He was a showman, a great showman. So we see that things are not always just as they appear to be. Sometimes a closer look reveals sleight of hand or even objects we hadn't realized existed before. Boy, this is a nice room. Oh, hey, do you work here? I sure do. I work back in the kitchen. You work in the kitchen? Well, uh, you've probably seen a lot of illusions then, haven't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I have. I've seen about everyone there is. Well, have you ever seen an illusion with sound? Sound? Yeah, yeah. This is real simple. I'll give you a demonstration. Yeah, this is called ventriloquism. Yeah, okay, now watch this, because what we do is we put a word in here, and it appears to come out over here. I don't believe it. Well, watch. Dog. Dog. And it's right there. That's amazing. Yeah. I take a word like cat. Cat. It's right there. Well, that's great, you know. But if you can do it, I can do it. You want to try it? Go ahead. Put something into the cup. <sighs> no, not that. No, not that. Uh, try a word. A word? Yeah. Maloney. OK, let's try it. Nope, that didn't seem to work. Let's try a complete sentence. How about this? I understand every illusion I've seen here at the Magic Castle. Baloney. <laughs> so you do understand that? No, not really. Oh, well, it's very simple. You see, the ear can locate the general direction that sound is coming from, but not the exact direction. So if the eye sees the sound coming here, it assumes that's where it came from, because we didn't move our lips. We hope. Yeah. But now, when you're talking, right, we see your lips moving, right, we don't see mine. Yeah. And it looks like you're talking. Amazing. Yeah. We're fooled by illusions because our mind evaluates each situation in the light of our past experiences. The mind fills in the blanks by making logical assumptions. Obviously, this is probably a player piano or something. Maybe not. Uh, you take requests, can you play it? How about It's a Small, Small World? You know, I used to play a little piano myself. Uh, mind if I uh, try it? Is that all right? Thank you for the arpeggio. Let's try this here. How about that? Sometimes the things you see and hear around you just aren't in harmony with scientific reality. And when that happens, I take that as my cue to sit back and enjoy the show. Thank <laughs> you.